Do you have any questions? Yeah, the books are outside. Any questions? Yeah? The 15th and the 21st night, what is your division? Similarly, from the 23rd to the 29th, what is your division of reading? Why did I not give you the, the Jews for the 16th day and the 17th day? Yeah. I've done that in my book. Yeah, when I, but this is my opinion. You can choose as you wish, yeah. The book is now finished today, the first draft, and I've given the Jews for every single day, yes? Uh, so my question is a bit longer, though. Um, so when you explain, so when you quoted the Sanatana, you said that the Sanatana is not putting the boundaries and obviously we use the band that. The surahs. Yeah, yes. So obviously the Quran wasn't revealed in the order that we have today. So for example, like Surah Qalam was the first part of the Quran. Like. I'm not hearing. I think you better come closer to me. I'm not hearing what you're saying. I have to get a hearing aid. So, so the way you explain, uh, as in putting boundaries in the Quran, so you said... But Allah placed the boundaries, yes. yes. So Allah did it, yes. Yes. So obviously we don't, you're saying not to use the boundaries that you have at present time. I don't know who did it. Okay, fine. And that is a, a, a great sin, as, as, you, as you mentioned. So the, the order that we have the Quran in now, whether how you mentioned it or how it's set now, we have Surah Fatah, Surah Baqarah, as you mentioned, should recite on the What I should have said is that every time you recite a Jews, you must begin with Surah Al-Fatiha, every time, every day, yes, go ahead. So, so my question is, obviously, uh, the, the way the Qur'an is uh, ordered now, wherever, which way you recite, we decide the truth, obviously it wasn't revealed in that manner, for example, Surah Qalam, that was the first part. Oh, you're Quran. talking about the chronological sequence of the revelation. Yes, yeah, so what might... The chronological sequence is, this one came down first, right. and this one came down second, and this one came down last. This is the chronological sequence of revelation. But Allah has not arranged the Quran according to the chronological sequence. Rather, he's arranged the Quran as surahs in his wisdom. So what I'm trying to get at, so obviously when the Quran was revealed in its chronological order, there, was, there wasn't a mushaf as we, at that time. So uh, as I'm correcting my misunderstanding, this was something that Umar who decided to do in his time. What do you mean by there was no Mus'haf? Please explain. As far as I know, we have incorrect my understanding. When the Quran was revealed, it was, it was revealed to the Prophet and also he would teach you know, the Sahaba at that time. Yeah. And on part. Oh, I see. So it was Umar who decided that Bakara. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It was. Wait a minute, please. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes. Uh, it was Omar and Abu Bakr, Siddiq and Osman. They are the ones who said that al Bakara must come first. And they are the ones who said that Ali Imran must come second. Is this arrangement from them or from Allah? That's what I'm trying to understand. Now I'm telling you, yeah. before you answer, uh, this arrangement is from Allah. Okay. Allah is the one and he communicated to Jibra'il Islam, and Jibra'il Islam commanded the Prophet Islam, and so the arrangement of the Quran that we now have with the surahs, 114 surahs, and the boundaries that were built, or the walls, it all came from Allah, not from Abu Bakr and Umar and so on. No. That's, your, that's the answer, yeah. Okay, so when, so when, that, when the Quran was compiled, in a complete form, shall we say. That the Quran was already compiled, the Quran was completely finished in the lifetime of the Prophet <laughs> If you're talking about a Quran that is recorded in writing mm -hmm. and putting the writing together, that, that is an unimportant part of the subject. This is the Quran here, the Quran is a recitation and the recitation is completed. So the recitation is completed. The recording of the recitation in writing is a different matter. But this is the Quran. So your issue, with the, with your stock issue is the main why the partitions in, in there. For example, why is the Jews one not the complete Surah Baqarah and why is it up to that certain point? That's your 
that's your kind of issue I spoke, you now. I spoke uh, with simplicity and with clarity. I could not have spoken with more simplicity and more clarity. You are confused, that is your problem, not mine. Sorry. I'm not saying I'm confused. <laughs> no, you, I have spoken and I have explained the subject with simplicity and with clarity. Yes. When you hear the recording, you'll see the whole lecture was delivered with simplicity and clarity. I'm not arguing with simple clarity. I'm can you explain to me what is the problem? I, I'm not able to understand the problem. No, all, all I was trying to understand was that you mentioned, the Sheikh mentioned the chronological, chronological order of the Quran. So obviously he explained. That was part of the question to understand basically the chronological of the Quran. Obviously he said, no, look, this is a time of Allah, Umrah, 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 decided that this is the boundary of the Quran. So obviously. That was trying to understand that part, so my question was answered. So the lead on question was that was obviously he said that, uh, she said that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that yeah, the issue, or the problem is the boundaries we have in the Quran now are incorrect. So obviously, we no, no, no. no, no, no. The boundaries that we have in the Quran are correct. Okay. I don't know what Tom, Dick, and Harry did. What Allah did is correct. Allah did, Allah separated the Quran in surahs. Some unknown person, we don't know who he is, decided that the first Jews must stop at 141 of Surah Al-Baqarah. And I say that is wrong, but I said, if you feel that is correct, continue. I'm not stopping you, you can continue, but if you believe that recit reciting the Quran that way, will remove from your heart this perception of time moving faster and faster. You're whistling in the wind. It's not going to do it, no. no, no my question was answered. So yeah. was answered. My question was answered. It was just the first part where you explained the college order and the separation, which basically finalized the answer. So, I, so I, you, I, you, I, you, you asked the question. Your, so. your accent is difficult for me to understand. <laughs> the accent. Yeah. Any more questions? Any more questions? Yeah. I can't understand the accent. Yeah. It's very, it's very, uh, it's not correct way of uh, yeah. addressing the matter. No, no, I just want to ask you about so when you read translation, you should do the same with the uh, surah complete. Sorry? When you read in translation the Quran, obviously first you read in Arabic. He's saying that when you read the translation, do you follow the same method? Translation is asking. No, no, this lecture has completely nothing, zero, zero, zero to do with anything concerning translation. We are only concerned with the Quran, and when you're reciting the Quran, you shouldn't have any translation there with you at all. If you don't understand what you're reciting, never mind. Keep on reciting, but at the same time, you should study to understand. But keep on reciting, don't stop to check the meaning. No. Keep on reciting until you are able to recite and also understand. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Yeah. No more questions? This face is familiar. From the Caribbean? Yes, yes. Jamaica? Jamaica, okay. <laughs> I'm from Trinidad. <laughs> Your face is familiar. Any other questions? If not, uh, yeah. Uh, it's so similar to this, I'll speak loud. But you don't have a Jamaican accent anymore, what happened? <laughs> so I was born in Enfield. Oh, you're born here, okay. All right. Uh, someone asked me, it, it sort of similar to this, but someone asked me, uh, Concerning, you know, like, uh, uh, I shall be better find out what it is. I'm not hearing properly. The accent is difficult for me. But, uh, concerning time, uh, time. Uh, the, the, the months, because we have a lunar calendar, yeah? and uh, Someone asked me, I can answer it, um, so if I can get the answer now. Someone asked me about uh, the Yahud and their calendar. Yeah? 
and they have a su uh, uh, lunar solar calendar. And it's sort of a, it's attached to the seasons, yeah. And they said, well, then why is it that the Islamic calendar, Hajj calendar, is solar? And ours moves over, over the what? Well, in fact, it doesn't move. It moves in. It, it moves in comparison to the Gregorian calendar, but it also moves in comparison to the uh, Jewish calendar because theirs is uh, lunar, but so but somehow they fixed it so it doesn't move. Okay. The Yehuda fixed their calendar. Yeah. Yeah. We are ourselves this Ummah of Nabi Muhammad we have also abandoned the moon. We have abandoned the moon, yeah. Uh, everybody, when you ask how old are you, no one will give his age. No one will give his age with the moon. Everybody will give you age with the sun. There's a proof that we have abandoned the moon. As a consequence today, <laughs> this Ummah is in the mess in which it is. The Arabs changed the lunar calendar, they corrupted it, in order to bring the moon to the sun, Wajumiya Shamsu Wal Kamar. So every third year they will add an extra month. So Ramadan will also always come in the summertime. Okay? And Allah responded to that in the Quran in Surah Tawbah. إِنَّمَا النَّسِيُّ زِيَادَةٌ لِلْكُفْرِ Yes. This nasi, this nasi, this corruption of the system of time is the road that leads to increasing kufr. Increasing kufr. Uh, by adding a, an extra month every three years. To, think, to take the lunar calendar and bring it to the solar calendar so that the month of Ramadan will always be in the summertime. Then a Roman Catholic Pope in Rome, Pope Gregory, he did something exactly the same. He took the lunar calendar to make it reach the solar calendar. Because with the solar calendar you can have a universal system of time. You cannot do it with the lunar calendar. So he said, now a man can have 31 days. Someone should have sent him to jail for that. Someone should have sent him to jail for that. And then we all accepted it. Nobody questioned it. Not even the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Not even the Islamic Republic of Iran. <laughs> Nobody questioned it. A man can have 31 days. Yes, that's what the Pope said. And we accepted it. A man can have 30 days, a man can have 29 days, a man can even have 28 days, said the Pope. The Pope is always right. <laughs> and as a consequence of that, this universalist, universal system of time was accepted by the whole Ummah. Whole Ummah. And I am writing this book to try to stop it and to tell and explain to people, this is the price that you pay for abandoning the moon. That you have the perception of time moving faster and faster and you cannot lie to your own heart. No, you cannot lie to your own heart. Once you perceive time moving faster and faster, the implication is that your heart is no longer beating in harmony with the system of time. You're on the road of kufr, greater and more kufr. Hmm? Uh, we are the only people, those who are faithful to the Quran. I don't know how many there are who are faithful to the Quran, who now will return to the moon for the system of time. Maybe one in a thousand, only one in a thousand will do that. But it is astonishing to me that I am now I am in contact with Hindus. I am in contact with Christians with Orthodox Christians, I contact with others as well. And the whole of the rest of the world, all, all, all have abandoned the moon. All. Only those in the 
Ummah of Nabi Muhammad والسلام, who remained faithful to the Quran, we are the only people left in the world. The only people who can call mankind back to lunar time. And this is the purpose of today's lecture. And also, you come on Saturday, inshallah, here on Masjab at the University of London. East London. University of East London at 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock, inshallah. And I pray that these words of mine will reach from you to others as well. Any other questions? Yeah. When is the book going to be done? From, the book going to be from Jamaica? Yeah. <laughs> from where? Tanzania. Tanzania? MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Three young men from Dar es Salaam took the ferry and came to Zanzibar to meet me. And I taught them for four days. I have never met brighter students than like these. Masha Allah for Tanzania. Yes, yes. What is the question? The first draft finished today. The first draft. But when you're writing a book, Allah Ta'ala doesn't have first draft or second draft. No, no, no. Me, I have to have first draft or second draft and third draft and so on. Um, but this book at this time is 98 pages. Uh, you can expect it to cost 100, inshallah. Uh, give me a little time to complete uh, the second and third draft. And uh, alhamdulillah, we have a lot of offers from people who offer to help to pay. So we print the book for free distribution. Free distribution. Yeah, we can't wait. We can't wait for people to buy the book. <laughs> yes, free distribution. Uh, so it had to be printed in large numbers and uh, many people have come forward to say yes, we'll help you. Mm. Okay, uh, the books are at the back. If you'd like to get any books, you can bring them to me and I can autograph them for you. Rabbana, taqabbal minna inna ka inta samil alim, wa tuba alayna ya mulana inna ka inta tawab rahim, barahmatika ya rahim wa rahmin, ameen.